Hello guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about dual ether. Let's see what stats we're working with. MR8 weapon, 1 attack speed, normal attack speed, 20% crit chance with a normal multiplier and 28% status chance. Usually people won't see such a weapon say, MR8, dual ether, oh that's a garbage weapon, don't even bother, but I get a ribbon for it. And when I checked its stats, I was like, wait a second. That doesn't sound right. This one that didn't have these stats. And I was right. After melee 3.0, they melee 2.9999. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, they buffed it significantly. Now it's much better. It's on par. Maybe not on par. It's just a step below Nami Skyla Prime. And Nami Skyla Prime is vaulted MR11. And it's so expensive to buy at the moment. Unless you have its relics. Just go crack them. I don't have its relics. And it's expensive. So I just looked at it, and then looked at Dual Ether and said, Oh, I wonder if a Riven for Dual Ether is actually cheaper than the Nami Skyla Prime. And guess what it is. Nami Skyla Prime, it has pretty much a little bit more of everything. 2% more crit chance, 5% more status chance, but it has the same damage and same crit multiplier. The only thing that actually makes a difference is the attack speed. Just a little side note. The impact and puncture on Dual Ether are the same. While well, on Nami Skyla Prime, impact is a little less, so less chance on getting impact. Can be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Just a little note, side note to put there. Okay, let's let's build the weapon, I guess. Okay, stance. I use Swirling Tiger. Why? It has two slash. It has two slash procs in the first in the neutral combo and an impact proc that leads into a knockdown. I don't know if you know this or not, but knockdowns currently in Warframe are goddamn solid. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, by the way, you saw that there is no mods on this weapon and there is no arcanes on my Neja. So watch this. I'm gonna spawn a single heavy gunner and it will be paused, so it takes finish. Uh, it takes stealth multipliers. I know it does, but come on, no mods. Okay, watch this. Do you see that bleed proc? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ground finishers will always do a bleed proc, and it will do 16 times the damage, just like that. No mods. Yes, uh, yes, I know it took stealth multipliers, but no mods. Come on. That's fair. Alright, let's build the weapon. First off, let's add damage. Pressure point. Easy get mod to get by. If you have prime version, go for the prime version. Okay, second. Range. Where's range? Reach. Yeah, prime reach. Definitely go for the prime reach. Like, pressure point is 120% and primed one is 165, but it's not the same with reach and prime reach because reach is 1.1 and prime reach is 3. It's meters. 3 meters worth of range. That's more than twice. Okay, then we have crit chance. Let's talk about blood rush. You don't have blood rush? Lua spy mission. Rotation C. Relatively easy to get. We have decent sales chance and somewhat decent IPS okay let's start condition overload do you have condition overload if not you have two options one which I suggest just buy it with platinum second which I definitely do not suggest is go to Uranus Ophelia and farm it the drop chance is horrendous 0.02% drop chance it drops from the butchers Let's say if you do 10 hour missions, you will still not get it in a week. So you get my point. At least I didn't, because I did 10 hour mission and I didn't get it. 10 hours worth of mission, not a single mission, 10 hour long. Okay, what, then, what else? We added crit chance, blood rush, 60% crit chance per combo multiplier. In 12x with 20% base, we will, we will reach 164% crit chance. So. Crit chance is nothing without crit damage. Organ Shatter. 90% crit damage. 
Now that bumps up our crit multiplier to 3.8x. Pretty decent. Okay, if you want to use Amalgam Organ Shatter, it has 85% on max. Pretty much the same thing, so go ahead. Then Attack Speed, Berserker, best option. Also an expensive mod. Not, uh, it's not exactly an expensive mod, you can get it for like 10 to 15 plat, but its drop chance is as low as Condition Overload. It drops from the Corrupted Ancients. So yeah, buy this too, because it's actually cheap, unlike Condition Overload. Adding more attack speed would be a good option, but I can't fit more in this build. It's not optimal to add more at least, at least without a ribbon. Alrighty, so what else? Let's build Viral. 60-60 for Toxin and 60-60 for Cold. So you might be wondering, normal mods, not even prime mods, completely normal mods, a normal build, what can it do? Now let me show you. I'm gonna be using level 120 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. I'm gonna unpause AI, unpause AI and use Invisibility. See that? After the first combo, you get a knockdown and then the ground finisher. And that's end of story for these guys. Without it, let me show you without it. Oh shit, it almost died before I used the ground finisher. Yep, this one died. Alright, so it definitely packs a punch. Definitely more more than your run the bill MR run of the mill MR8 weapon. Hell. More than any ZA. I've never seen a ZA do this good, at least not after 2.9, which considerably nerfed condition overload before it condition overload to completely shred these guys. But no more guys, no more. Alrighty, let's jump to the normal build with Prime Mods. Let's see what this it can do. The, mo the biggest difference is, re is range, because range is a big deal. Like 3 meter worth of range. You can see I will hit more guys significantly more. And increased damage is also nice. Dead. Alrighty. So what about Rivens, you might be asking? This thing has 5 out of 5 Riven disposition. So yeah, let's jump into a Riven setup. My Riven has 82.9% attack speed and cold damage. I dropped 60-60 for cold for this. Yeah, I get less status chance, but attack speed difference is significant, so it makes up for it. Let's go. Let's see what it can do. And this time, I'm going to drop 20 of them. The ideal Riven for dual Ether. Avoid crit chance, crit damage is welcome, range is welcome, attack speed is welcome. Status chance, no it's enough. What it has is enough. So focus on crit damage, attack speed and range. Because those are defining factors. If you got like crit damage, damage and range or attack speed, yeah that's also pretty good. It doesn't take a second to kill one of these guys. That is, if I let them bleed out. It's dead. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why my 12x combo doesn't go down to zero, that's because I'm using Naroman to like keep it at 12x. Naroman has a ability called. Uh, Power spike, it decays instead of just completely going away. It's for the showcasing purposes, so usually I just use my Xenoric. Oh, now which I talked about Xenoric. If you want to play like normal mission and you don't want to take Blood Rush, it would be a good option to drop both Blood Rush. Oh no, no, don't drop Blood Rush. Yeah, drop Organ Shatter for more attack speed with quickening if you just want to use it for normal everyday uses and not go completely into melee mode. Or you could do something else too. You could drop organ shatter for quickening and then take life strike. Like I I like I like to run like this. 
that is with, with the ribbon or without the ribbon like without the ribbon i would go drop organ shatter drop blood rush put quickening and life strike i would go like this because i'm not gonna reach 12x i know it before i reach 12x everything is dead so yeah that's a thing but if you want just want to have damage then Blood Rush is your boy. Blood Rush and crit damage. Okay. So what next? Let's bump up everything with Warframe abilities. Okay, not Life Strike. Oh, oh this is the wrong setup. Okay, Blood Rush, Ogden Shadow. Okay, now we're set up. I'm gonna be using Neja. You might be wondering why. Fireworker, first ability, has heat procs. Heat procs reduce an enemy max armor to half for the duration of the heat proc. Blazing Chakra, 155% damage vulnerability on my build. That means 3.1 times the damage. And it has a heat proc, so that will make it, how much? 6.2? 6.2 times the damage. Warding Halo, I'm not gonna die. It's not like I take Mirage and I do shit tons of damage, but in reality, I will die in like half a second, so what's the point? Divining Spears, Divine Spears, sorry, Divine Spears lets me use my Blazing Chakra more easily and spread those effects. Alrighty, let's do this then. Invincibility off, this off, let's take some energy. Alright, fourth ability and second ability. You ready guys? Drop him. It's a slaughter. None of them even stand a chance. As soon as I get in the range, they're dead. Not even a single combo can be finished. My third run out. I'm gonna continue. Just watch this. Just look at the damage and tell me you don't like this weapon. I definitely recommend this weapon. Definitely you should get it. Unless you have like a Nani Scala Prime already. Then you probably don't need it unless you want to go ribbons. There is a chance that this weapon with a ribbon might outdo Nami Skyla, but I don't guarantee it. Also, this weapon is more likely to not get any ribbon disposition nerfs. So yeah, that's to take into account too. All right, I guess that's it for today. All right, have a good day and bye bye.